Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. So, uh, we'll do a pediatric scenario today. Okay. So, uh, we'll start with the PALS scenarios. So, uh, you're going to get a one-year-old child who has been brought, uh, who will be brought, who will be brought unresponsive. Uh, we'll just see uh, the history, everything once the patient arrives. So, the patient has not arrived yet. You have uh, one to two minutes before you start. Okay, sir. Uh, so, uh, we'll be uh, assigning the team role okay. and we'll be keeping the um, required things ready before we accept, uh, we, uh, before the arrival of the patient. So, according to uh, the wet flags, uh, the things that we will be requiring is first the weight of the body, uh, weight of the patient. Weight of the patient is uh, 1 plus 5 into 2. So, uh, this patient's uh, weight, uh, age plus 5 into 2. So, this patient's weight is 1, age is 1. So, weight will be 1 plus 5 into 2, that is approximately 10 kgs. So, coming to energy, uh, if we need to shock the patient, it will be 2 joules per kg and it will increase with every uh, shock that we deliver. So, it will increase like 2 joules, next will be 4 joules per kg, 5 joules, sorry, 6 joules per kg, up to maximum of 10 joules per kg or uh, the maximum of the adult dose. Okay. So, this patient will be requiring initial do uh, dosage of 20 joules per uh, 20 joules. Then coming to uh, tracheal tube size, we have size for the cuffed as well as uncuffed tube. So, in case of uncuffed tubes, we have to go by uh, age by 4 plus 4 and in case of cuffed tubes, it is age by 4 plus 3.5. So this patient, it is already uh, age is uh, one, one year. So one by four point two five plus uh, four, it will be around four point five uh, size tube we will be requiring. So we want a cuffed or an uncuffed tube. Cuffed is better. It's cuffed it's tube. Better. No. So anything after above your uh, neonatal period, hmm. right now the recommendation you can use the cuff. cuffed. Cuffed. Then coming to uh, F for fluids, so uh, fluid resuscitation in case of hypotension will be 20 ml per kg. Uh, so we will be bolusing the uh, patient with 20 ml uh, of boluses. Then coming to uh, 20 ml per, per kg, kg so into uh, 10 kg, 10 kg. So 200 ml. 200 ml, 200 ml bolus. bolus. Okay. So then we'll coming to lo uh, loraz. In case of any seizures, we have to go ahead with lorazepam. That dose is 0.1 mg per kg. That will come to 1 mg. Okay. Uh, into 10. Uh, then coming with adrenaline dose. Adrenaline dose in pediatric uh, cardiac arrest is 0.01 mg per kg. Uh, in case of a child who is 10 kgs, it will be 0.1 mg. Okay. So the dilution is usually 1 is to 10,000. But to get uh, 1 mg per kg, we will take 1 ml of adrenaline with 9 ml of normal saline. Dilution becomes 1 is to 10,000. And from there, if we give 1 ml it will come to 0.1 mg okay uh, then coming to uh, glucose if patient comes in hypoglycemia we have to give 2 percent of uh, 2 ml per kg of 10 percent dextrose so this patient will be requiring 20 uh, ml of 10 percent dextrose okay uh, so, so that is your wet okay. flag calculation so okay. you have calculated and you have documented and you have kept ready okay. so why that is important i am telling you don't need to run during that okay. time we need not calculate so once the patient arrives you calculate the wet flag in your case sheet okay. and document and keep it there okay. brusselo tape available okay well and good you can use that the now the patient has been arrived i will give you a brief history so the child has been found unresponsive no bystander cp was given so the paramedic have arrived the scene so they have assessed the child and they have started compression ventilation at a ratio of only one paramedic has gone so he has started at 30 is to 2 so that is what is happening and the baby has been brought wheeled in now as soon as the baby is arrived, we'll be assigning the roles. Uh, Dr. Cecil, can you take ca uh, care of uh, compressions? Uh, Dr. Uh, Ebin, you can take care of the uh, uh, drugs. Uh, Dr. Uh, Naveen, you can take care of the airway. Uh, Dr. Pretty, you can take care of the defibrillator. And you can be, uh, Dr. Jerry, you can take care of the time. Uh, so, as soon as the baby comes, we will shift from 30 is to 2 to 15 is to 2 compression as we have uh, adequate manpower. So, uh, initial, we will go for the uh, already patient was brought in, rolled into ER with CPR. Okay. So, we will continue the CPR, connect to the monitors, mm. and uh, we will assess the patient in 2 minutes. Okay. Uh, so, initial one. assessment. Of so, uh, the CPR is ongoing. Uh, 15 uh, is to, to 2 compression two. is going on. Okay. And uh, 15. Compression followed by two, two rescue breaths. Uh, two rescue breaths. So that is the difference that you have made between, now. Uh, then adults and children. What uh, uh, IV access? IV access. Uh, we should have to. Uh, we have to secure two uh, IV accesses. <laughs> we have to keep uh, adrenaline dose ready. Uh, one mg, point one mg. 
ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഇനിഷ്യൽ റിതം അസസ്മെന്റ് ഷോസ് എ സിസ്റ്റോൾ a systole so one important thing i want to tell you when you see a systole what are the next things that you First need to keep in mind to see if the leads are correctly placed or okay next uh, uh, next next routinely one thing is that you have to see that leads are correctly placed yeah. and very rarely you can increase the amplitude yeah. and see very yeah. fine vf we might VF. Oh. so straight line protocol always it can be an asystole hmm. or it can be a lead disconnection but one difference what is the difference is that when it is lead disconnection hmm. it will be a dotted line hmm. so you are seeing a continuous line hmm. so that will give you a clue that it is an asystole okay so now we have continuing cpr hmm. and you have told him to get an iv access iv access got i we access the seed so now we have to give the first dose of adrenaline how much you want to give we want we are going to give 0.01 mg per kg for this child 10 kg so it will be 0.1 mg 0.1 mg or 1 ml of our dilution 1 ml of 1 in 10000 dilution you can give 1 ml so that clarity you have to come okay so there are some uh, areas you have got pre filled syringes are available mm-hmm. so you can uh, go with that so just the changes let them continue the resuscitation mm-hmm. what are the changes in uh, pediatric cpr high quality cpr okay. the rate is 100 to 100 per minute depth depth is 1/3 of the anterior posterior One, diameter okay uh, then the difference is 15, 15 is to do to and 30 is to do then what are the major changes Rescue pulse check uh, pulse check where yeah. you want to do the pulse uh, if check if it is less than 1 year we have to check the carotid uh, sorry we have to break the pulse uh. and if it is 1 year or above we can see the femoral or the carotid pulse okay fine then what uh, is the other check you breath every 2 to 3 seconds uh, every once you have an advanced airway you can deliver and rescue, rescue breaths every, every one to 2 to 3 2 to 3 seconds okay just the half of it. Then what are the other differences that you want witnessed and unwitnessed, unwitnessed arrest yes, so if it is witnessed arrest witnessed arrest then we can uh, first initiate the emergency services and then we can start with cpr but if it is unwitnessed first we have to deliver the first 2 uh, minutes of cpr <coughs> after that only we have to activate the emergency services okay what is the difference in the uh, resuscitation council you can go them slight difference uh, in case of a resuscitation council we have to first if we notice a patient which is unresponsive irrespective of witness or unwitness we have to res- uh, deliver five rescue breaths after that only we have to em- initiate the emergency services emergency services okay now we are continuing with uh, ongoing cpr mm-hmm. we have uh, two minutes is over yes. now mm-hmm. okay two minutes over with the assessment it's still showing a systole oh systole so what do you need Give to do second dose of adrenaline and we'll continue cpr uh, in case of anybody getting tired you can change uh, this thing because it's a pediatric cpr yeah. you don't feel exhausted very mm-hmm. quickly So if you feel exhausted that person can take over second dose of adrenaline second dose of adrenaline given okay you are little early in giving second dose of adrenaline we are just 2 minutes into the assessment now little bit early so what is the uh, rule of thumb what you can do every alternate rhythm check we can do every alternate rhythm check you can do so uh, that is the easiest thing that you can uh, remember now what else you wanted to look in for uh, now we want to take an abg to look for any reversible causes of arrest okay uh, so uh, it is right your quality is not good <laughs> that is why you have switched it on so abg findings abg findings not yet available <laughs> abg will take time you continue resuscitation Uh, only yeah. securing advanced air we can go ahead with an advanced air in this time okay uh, so so advanced air is placed so what is the changes that you want him to do uh, now he has to give breath every 2 to 3 seconds while oh. compressions will be continuous okay so continuous 100 to 120, 120 compressions per minute okay so this is the feedback device i think they are able to see it's mm. one it's strain green uh, that the quality of cpr is adequate mm. so always make sure that you are using a feedback device during your resuscitation mm. not during simulation mm. you have to use it during your resuscitation to ensure that you are giving adequate compressions okay now 2 minutes is over okay so 2 minutes is over we are reassessing mm. so re rsa any change is still no sir in, it is still asystole so third dose of, uh, second dose of adrenaline will be going second dose of adrenaline, adrenaline. Oh. already given he has given it very early so anything else you want you want to look in for abg will take time pediatric cardiac arrest foreign hypoglycemia hypoglycemia you can ask them to check too can you please check sugar blood sugar 1 2 3 it will take 10 seconds no? so hypoglycemia is there no sir no hypoglycemia okay abg is still not available you are continuing resuscitation advanced airway secured so he is continuing breath every 2 to 3 seconds and now we are just uh, not looking into 30 15 is to 2 hmm. we are just continuing at a compression at a rate of 100 to 120 compression hmm. so uh, any change in the rhythm that you are observing there 
in the monitor. And it's showing a VF, sir. So you are having some ventricular fibrillation. So what what you have to do? It's not very common in children. For the sake of academic purpose, we have created it. So ventricular fibrillation. So we have to go with the first. Why you have stopped the compression? You have to continue compression. We have to go ahead with the first delivery of the first shock. Yes. So we have to first. Charge what are the changes that you want? You have to be pediatric paddle. That should have been done before. We have done that. So we have removed and made it pediatric compatible. Next thing? Joules will be 20 joules. 20 joules per kg. Okay, select. And then we have to deliver the shock. Okay. Charging. Don't deliver the shock. Deliver the shock. Don't, because this is not a compatible mannequin. That's the reason. Okay. All clear? Shock delivered. Okay. Resume CPR. Energy is not delivered to patient. Switch it off the mission. I don't want any arrest to happen because of simulation. Okay, continue. We'll continue with uh, adrenaline doses on every alternate assessment. Okay. Uh, then, uh, so now uh, we are continuing CPR. Can you just give me a briefing of what all things have happened? So we have a child who has been brought unresponsive. No bystander CPR given. Mm -hmm. Paramedic have arrived the scene and started off with a compression of 30 is to 2. Then the child has arrived. You have calculated the wet flags. Mm -hmm. Then you have started uh, with high quality CPR. Mm -hmm. We had more than one rescue. So we went ahead with 15 is to 2 compression. Mm -hmm. So we have secured an IV access. Mm -hmm. Then we are looking for the reversible causes of cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. We have given two doses of adrenaline till now. And meanwhile, during the third rhythm assessment, we have found out that the rhythm was a shockable one. Mm -hmm. So we have given one. One dose, one uh, defibrillation, and CPR is being continued. Okay. So that yes. is the briefing. Okay, so we have got one shock only. We have delivered, so we can reassess the patient right now. So we are reassessing. It is still still a shockable rhythm. So what is the energy that we need to select here? We have to hike it up 40 joules now. 40 joules per kg. So can you give without switching on the machine? Just give 40 joules per kg. In, arrange for amiodarone. In the meantime, we have to arrange for 5 mg per kg. Amiodarone is needed. Okay. This will be 50 mg. We have to keep ready. Okay. 50 mg of amiodarone should be kept ready. Mm -hmm. So, I will mean, keep ready 50 mg of amiodarone. Mm -hmm. Okay. All clear. Mm -hmm. Shock delivered. Okay. So, two shocks has been delivered. Mm -hmm. CPR being continued. Amiodarone being kept ready. Okay. Now, uh, the ABG. ABG, the machine is not working. It is error. So, we don't have any ABG findings. So that can be a scenario where we don't have anything else. So are, are you concerned regarding an ABG here? Because what is the most important cause of a pediatric cardiac arrest? Mostly it is a hypoxic cardiac arrest. We have to go back and take a sample history and all. But for the simulation purpose, I have created an uh, ventricular fibrillation and all. But it's not very common. You see PEA systoles are most common. Uh, and even cardiac arrest is not very common unless mm -hmm. when you are a patient, you will have sick child coming to you. But pediatric cardiac arrest are not very common as like an adult cardiac arrest. Now, uh, we have uh, two minutes over. Two minutes over. What we are seeing in the monitor? There is some organized rhythm. Check for pulse. Check for pulse. There is a palpable pulse. So, uh, are you happy with that heart rate for a one year old who have given three or two doses of adrenaline? So, you should be cautious about that because. Whenever, any time, he can go it's into 60 heart rate is seen. Then what do you have to do? Restart with uh, a 60, CPR. you have to restart the CPR. CPR. So that is the one other difference that you need mm -hmm. to keep mm -hmm. in your mind. If the heart rate goes below 60, mm -hmm. you have to start CPR. CPR. Again. If heart rate is more than 60, child mm -hmm. is active, moving all his four limbs. Mm -hmm. You want to start CPR mm -hmm. no. with signs poor poor perfusion. perfusion. That also you need to mm -hmm. keep in your mind. With signs of poor, poor perfusion, perfusion, heart rate less than 60, 60, you need to start the CPR. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now what you have to do? Now uh, connect him in post resuscitation okay. care. What are the key things? We have to connect him to a ventilator. <coughs> okay. Initial saturation 94 to 99 percent. Okay. We have to maintain normal thermia for the next five days. Okay. For initial two days hypothermia with three days of normal thermia. After that, uh, we have to uh, glucose to be kept uh, within uh, normal range. Uh, then uh, no hypercapnia, no hypocapnia should be there. 35 to 50, uh, 45 pCO2 should be there. After that, uh, we have to monitor the patient uh, temperature uh, monitoring. Then, uh, if any seizure activity anything is there, we have to go ahead with an EEG and an imaging within the first 72 hours. Okay. Uh, so now you do a primary assessment uh, after this. You do a primary assessment. Mm -hmm. Start off with the airway. Airway is already secured. Mm -hmm. B. What was the history? Go ahead and take a sample history. Mm -hmm. Now you will get a clue why the child went into a cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. So, pediatric cardiac arrest, 
what are the major things that we need to keep in our mind is we can just brief one two three ten points you can just tell me one one point each i wanted you to answer you can tell me because most common cause is hypoxia hypoxia yeah, okay so another point you can tell him this and you can pass it on so that everyone uh, the compression rate sir uh, one by third of the anthropocene diameter mm -hmm. should be okay Uh, the rate of compression if there is only 1 person 30 is to 2 if there is 2 15 is to 2 okay another difference uh, if a patient compressing patient gets tired then cpr should be changed and given compressions okay 2 minutes 2 minutes you so can you change for everyone but for pediatric anything specific the initial a algorithm be uh, a witness and witness witness yes, and uh, witness witnessed. okay anything else you want to have so placing of hands like placing of hands, hands. very important mm -hmm. okay So, if the heart rate, if it is less than sixty, with signs of poor perfusion, we have to go with CPR. When the patient is connected to the advanced airway, every two to three seconds, it should be int oh. ventilated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lot of things are <laughs> you have to. We haven't covered actually. Ages. Dose. Ah, joules. Joules per kg. Two joules per. You start defibrillation with two joules per kg. Then what are the differences? Pulse check. Pulse check. Pulse check. Where to do the pulse check? That is the another difference that we. Did. Then we have hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia also yeah, been added, mm -hmm. and hypoxia is one of the most common thing. Mm -hmm. Then the next important difference is doses of drugs. Doses of drugs. Adrenaline, Adrenaline. is point zero one mg per kg. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, amiodarone five milligram per kg. kg. Maximum of three. Uh, Three times. Three times. Three hundred. And uh, uh, if you want to give a second dose, when we will give a second dose of amiodarone? After the fifth. After the fifth shock. shock. So again, in adult, uh, we used to learn like if we have given like three mm, hundred, we will give one fifty. But in pediatrics, five joules per five milligram per kg. It is again five milligram per kg. So that is one difference. In asystole, first initially patient person will take asystole. Yes. Then if we give shock, then next after the shock we can give uh, amiodarone. So like not waiting for. Again. Only after. Two shocks, we will say that it is refractory to defibrillation. Yeah. So, whatever be the scenario, if the patient initially started off with asystole, then you had given two shocks. Later on, when you see it's a shockable rhythm, only after two shocks we will say that it is refractory to mm -hmm. defibrillation. Then only we need to give amiodarone. Amiodarone is actually a drug where we can use for a refractory ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia. Okay, so then. Then lidocaine dose. Lidocaine dose. One mg per kg. One mg per kg. Uh, then uh, other drugs, if needed. Other drugs like uh, calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate. Dose will be one millimole per kg. One millimole per kg. Or eight point five percent. Okay. And then uh, calcium. No, cal you said regarding bicarbonate. You said said regarding soda bicarbonate. Soda bicarbonate. One millimole per kg. One millimole per kg. Okay. And uh, in case of calcium gluconate, it is point five mL per kg. Point five mL per kg. Zero point five mL per kg. Maximum of thirty mL to be given. Thirty. Of hyperkalemia. Then fluid bolus, hypotension. Twenty mL per kg. Twenty mL per kg. How much bolus you can give? Hypotension. You can give sixty mL per kg unless and until you are suspecting a primary cardiac condition for the child. You are having a cardiac failure or anything. You need to little bit decrease. Maybe ten mL per kg is the initial bolus. That is the wonderful. Anything else that we have missed? I don't. First joules, two joules, three joules. Then. Uh, ETC or to monitoring? ETC or to monitoring. Uh, either we have to uh, that is to look for the quality of CPR mm. as well as uh, the uh, depth. Okay, uh, it is little bit different. Once you have got an advanced airway, we can use it. But otherwise, same like that of the adult. So uh, hand positions we have said, the chest uh, compression we have said, witnessed and unwitnessed mm -hmm. arrest difference we have said. Then. Checking for the response. Yes, checking for the response. You have to tap for the, the first step. You have to tap for the heel or something. Yeah, hypoglycemia. You need to keep that in your mind. Then IV access again. It can be a challenging in pediatric. So IV access. Always remember regarding the IV access. Advanced airway hypoxia. Good back ventilation is more than enough. Uh, if you are unable to do that, joules per kg positions. Everything we have. Uh, I think we have covered almost whatever is required. Okay. Anything else? Any anything else? Anyone? Because I don't feel like we have missed out anything. Okay, fine. Thank you.